What's going on guys? Vlad here, your host of Cabin Fever, and today we got our other host, Bergomi Francois. What's up, what's up, Cabin Fever? Always a pleasure. Oh man, that it is, that it is Bergomi. So on today's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, just ourselves a little bit, you know. Us being the co-hosts, uh, you know, we feel like you, the audience, need to get a little background on us and, uh, you know, figure out who we are. That's right, and, you know, we're not just two random guys, you know. We've got the history from all the way from, what, middle school? Bergomi, it's been since middle school. That's a long time now. That's like almost 10 years. That's too long, man. That's too long. When are you going to leave my life? I, I've asked myself the question all the time. <laughs> I'm trying to as we speak. Oh, uh, well, you're inching away, so. That's I right. Hope it's not, I hope that's just because of social distancing. Yes. You know, I try to keep it to six feet, maybe a little more. That's good. That's good. But right, um, practicing safe behavior. So, from middle school friendship to high school to, you know... Working boss small moves the first job together. We've got the backstory together. Um, so just to give you guys a backstory as well, what kind of kids were were we in high school? Oh man, uh, should I tell you who I was or should I tell you who you were? And then um, that's a great question. Um, Maybe we should talk about ourselves. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so too. Um, I'll start off strong and go with me first. I played a lot of sports. Was into the academics. Played football, basketball, and ran track. Um, between that. And staying focused on school, it was a you know cool high school experience. Um, I met Vlad through basketball actually um, in middle school when we were playing like recreational basketball. That's right, guys. See, I was so good at basketball that I just didn't want everyone to feel bad, so I I, I took a step down and I played rec basketball. That's right. Which is where I met Bergomi. He he lowered himself for me. And, and that's the best thing I could ever ask for. It's just true friendship right there. Thank you, Vlad. No, oh, you're very welcome, Bergomi. So, you got my backstory a little bit from high school. Um, pretty narrow, like, you know, straight path kid. For the most part, just hung around the kids who I did my activities with, with sports and academics. And then after school activities with Vlad and stuff like that. But uh, Vlad, Vlad, my friend, he <laughs> has, does not have the same experience. So, why don't you tell him about yourself, Vlad? Uh, well, so, I mean, I, I wasn't always the person who I am today. I, I wasn't so outgoing. Well, I wouldn't say I wasn't as outgoing in my mind as I was out in the exterior like in, in my head I always had like the idea of doing something bigger but I had a lot of things holding me back and uh you know growing up uh and leaving my house was like one of the biggest steps to like breaking out and kind of just like really chasing what I wanted to do and, and, it, and it was a big step forward so uh not who I am today but before I was you know a very angry kind of closed up person and you know I wasn't really like approachable I'd say uh got in a lot of trouble in 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 high school as Bergomi can attest to uh <laughs> some fighting here and there Vlad was uh, a troublemaker this is true um and I wasn't that good of a fighter truthfully I mean you know you live and you learn you live and, <laughs> you, you, live learn. and you learn roll with the punches <laughs> <laughs> exactly and that's what Vlad has did and he's doing pretty good I'd say to attest to what he's saying you know um that outgoing personality that he has now, he definitely had it in high school as well. He definitely just channeled them in different directions, and I'd say that now he's doing a great job. Well, thank you. It means it means a lot from a good friend like you, Mr. Bergoni. Thank you, man. Appreciate <laughs> it. So, you know, we had we were friends in high school. After that, went to I went to college. Vlad did his military training after high school, correct? Correct. And after that, Boston Small Moves occurred. Well, there was a little bit of time in between, actually. Like, so I, I gotten back from training, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk in another episode about what I've done for the year following that. But let's just let's just talk about how you know, since this is related to the moving company, we'll talk about Boston Small Moves. So let's just jump a year forward. That's right. Um, Boston Small Moves wasn't really when we first you know started it. Well, you know, like it wasn't really Boston Small Moves. It was kind of just. Um, I'd say just a guy. A way to make money. Yeah, exactly. You know, a gig. A gig it was 100% a gig. And <laughs> Vlad was finding these gigs as, you know, as he was progressing through after military training. And after one of his gigs, he called me up to join him. And, you know, the first, that was the first move that marked Boston Small Moves, I'd say. Correct? I would 100% agree with that. Because, you know, I've done a couple here and there assisting other people and just some small, like, little odds and ends kind of you know just uh you know buy me my dunkin donuts in the morning kind of jobs but uh this was the first one and it wasn't even like that high paying no <laughs> it definitely wasn't um but you know to us at that point it was good money 
Um, but uh, so, you know, Boston Small Moves gets marked with that first job. You become the owner of it. You know, I'm I'm happy to be a part of that process. I want to say I'm I owe I'm earned I I'm owed fifty percent of this, but it's okay. It's whatever. Well, I'll get I'll get that back to you yeah. someday. <laughs> it's not today. Um, or, or, or one day, one day. Soon. But um, since you are the owner and you work with me as a friend, can you tell me what are the pros of working with me as like as your friend? I, I mean, Bergomi, there's a ton of pros with working with a with a with a good friend. Um, and one is just that, like, you know, you can have a great time, like joking around. Like, you can't just joke around with anybody. But when you've been with some, like, you've known someone for so long, it's it's you know, it it, it makes just the day go by so much faster because you know you're joking around the whole time but like you also respect me to the point where you're not stepping on my feet and you're not dragging your uh rear end so you know what i mean like we're still pushing through the day but we're having a good time so that that's definitely one of the the uh, the, uh, the biggest pros of having a, a friend on the job um definitely i completely agree with that um knowing being your friend i know what your goals are you know in terms of how far you want to succeed um, you know my goals in terms of where I want to go in my life, so we both kind of connect in that aspect. Mm. Um, you call me up for the jobs that you need me for. I show up when you need me, and we both know what the goal is. And while we're trying to get there, we try, try to have a good time while we're getting there. Absolutely, and, and not to mention that obviously, like on on days when I'm overbooked, I can I have the trust in you to to send you out and do your own job as well. Yeah, and that's a pretty great bond to have. So, um, would you say that you'd before we even talk about having friends in the job, tell me what the con is with having a friend on the job, if you think that there are any. Well, I mean, it depends on what you think con. I mean, I, I don't I don't think of it as a... It can be a con, but I don't think of it in a negative way. It, it, for this particular point, is like, you know, Bergomi's a, a great friend, a great worker, but I got to respect his goals too because he respects mine. And, you know, he's going through college and he's, you know, you are, are, are like you know, having to dedicate your time to studying and, and, and doing extracurricular activities to get your career set. Um, and I have to respect that. So when you're not there every single day, I have to be understanding. So, you know, y it's great to have your friend on the job, but like you can't be upset when he can't be there because, you know, at the end of the day, that person is not just your employee. They're also a person with their own dreams, goals, aspirations. So you got to be respectful and mindful of, uh, of their time and their learnings. This is true. Um, just to give everyone some background info, I am in college, just finished actually. Um, currently trying to pursue grad school, so it's it's been a long process. So shout out to everyone there who's you know in the same grind, trying to pursue their career in with advanced studies. So well, keep, I know we have like all of one follower, so hopefully that one follower can be like a yay right, for right. going <laughs> in the comments, right? <laughs> awesome. Um, so with that being said, you've worked with employees who are friends and you've also have you you've also worked with employees who are not your friend who you've hired randomly correct yeah, absolutely or not randomly but you know you've selected them for the job absolutely yes um so as you know a manager what are what advice do you have for you know any entrepreneurs who are trying to run a business and have employees do you have any advice for them who have workers who aren't their friends or are their friends what uh what, what input do you have um well First of all, I, I have plenty of input because over the past couple of years, I've been through so many instances where it's like I've learned so much through the, the trial and error process of hiring the right employees. And um, I, I found a good uh, style of management to where I can kind of keep the employees like respecting me, but not not pushing me because that's what you really need to find. You need to get that good balance because... You know, in the beginning when I first started, I needed people, so I, I treated everyone like a friend and, you know, joked with them and, and treated them like I would have treated you. Uh, and that I found was a very big mistake because if you treat someone like a friend right off the bat, then they think like, well, it can go one of two routes. The, the person can be respectful and they'd be like, all right, my boss is really cool, but the other way it can go is completely south. They can think that, you know, you're this lenient guy and they can step all over you, show up late, not care on the job. And, and that can become very problematic. So, you know, I've had to fire a couple of people over the past two years because, you know, it may have been my fault and I accept that at this point, but, you know, I was too lenient and I, 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 I paved the way for them to be, you know, someone who I didn't want them to be. That's true. And um, just to add to that, you know, a big aspect of that when you're hiring people you don't know is that, you don't know if they have the same goal, what their goal is with what 
they're trying to do with their lives. Mm. So, you know, if you have a tough time distinguishing that, that goes back to them, like, not taking you seriously if you treat them as a friend or if they do take you seriously regardless, regardless if they treat you as a friend. So those are big things to look at to look into as well. Exactly. I totally agree with that. Uh, and to go back to what I was saying about how, you know, you can go one of two routes of treating someone too nice or too too stern. And, like, there's always two sides to the coin. Uh, you know, if you come off too, too like, aggressive in the beginning, then no one's going to want to show up for your jobs. No one's going to have respect for you. So, um, you know, people are just going to think you're that jerk boss who's always angry. And they're going to be like, you know, when they when you walk into the room, everyone's going to turn the other way. Um, and, and that's not a good style of management for me either. So, you know, I had to find a way to equalize. And, and you know, the way that I do it um, with the new guys is, you know, I show them a friendly side, but, you know, they'll understand when they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing. And, right. and I try to find that comfortable median. Absolutely. And I can say as one of Boston Small Moves employees that um, Vlad also does a good job of leading by example. He doesn't just talk the talk. Um, you know, when he's out there, he's also working hard as well. So it's not just like a do this, do that while he's sit sitting around looking pretty. Um, Which I do look pretty. Yeah, yeah, sure. But he is a hard worker as well. I can attest to that. So um, Vlad has been wrong, wrong with the punches since high school. And <laughs> I say he's doing a great job for now. Um, so there you have it, folks. You have some backstory between Vlad and Bergomi in, Bo in Boston Small Moves. Well, I mean, it's it's as simple as, as it is. You know, another great episode of uh, Cabin Fever. Uh, happy for everyone who is listening. Uh, and, uh, you know, keep tuning in. Give it a subscribe, a like. Share it on your social media if you want. But, uh, you know, I mean, we got one follower right now. Anything helps. Hey, keep telling your friends one follower. <laughs> one follower. It's going to add a couple zeros <laughs> eventually, right? Hey, till the next one, guys. Cabin Fever.